Hi, I'm Pierre Chevalier, CTO at Softrun. In this video, I'll show you what's new in Ondia Video 4. It's a long-awaited version. We've added so many features that it will be difficult to cover everything. But let me see if I can show you the most important ones. In Ondia Video 4, we have added many new features, so it's difficult to know where to start, but let's start with what we see. We have refreshed the user interface, but kept the same logic. So as usual, you can go in the Finder, select a bunch of files, drag and drop in your playlist, and start playing right away. We can create multiple playlists and save them, so as it's still document-based, very easy to use. One of the most awaited features of Ondia Video is the ability to have an output preview. You can do that by going to the menu window, select output preview, and there you have a preview of what is going out to your AJ, Blackmagic, Deltacast, or NDI output, and you can even put it in full screen. And you can see on this output preview that there are graphics on top of the video. This is because Ondia Video has a new option, the DGO for Dynamic Graphics Overlay option. To set that up, go in your preferences, a graphics pane where you can add CG projects. Then you can use them, select a default state. The default state is whether it should run by default or not. You can see that the box right, which is this project, is on by default. And if I untick it, you see that it goes away. Once you have added the CG project to the list, define their default state, you can also control the graphics on each clip. If you select a clip, go in the clip inspector, you see that there are all these projects and you can change the status. You can say, for example, for this clip, I would like to have the center text edit project to run. And if we start playing that project, you see that there is a new graphic on air. If I start playing the next clip, it goes away. Very easy to use. You can also change the values. You see here, we can see what is playing out there and I can change it here. What's new? And now, if I play it back, you see my text has been updated. So it's very easy to add graphics on air. CG projects are created as before in on the CG Designer, which is a free application that you can install on any computer in order to create your graphics. The next feature I wanted to talk about are transitions. Previously, it was only possible to do cuts between clips, but now I can select a clip, go in the inspector, and select a transition. There are different built-in ones, such as a cross-dissolve. So now if I close this, start the previous clip, you will see that it chained the next clip with a transition. But there's more to it, because we have done a transition editor, where you can see the different transitions that exist, what they do, but you can also add a video file in ProRes 4444 with an alpha channel. Once it is imported, you can see that it has automatically detected the edges. So when the first clip will end, so when the transition ends there, and when the next clip will start. Once it is done, you can close it, select the clip, and use the soft run wipe transition. Now, if I start the previous clip again, you will see that it will use my wipe transition. Next up is the secondary audio output. To do this, select in Preferences, Output Settings, and enable this option. What it does is that additionally to the audio that goes out your video device, you can also select any audio device on your Mac, including Dante or Madi, to output the audio. Before we get into another major update that we have done in Anya Video 4, which is the scheduler, uh, let me show you a few more things that we've added in the playlists. If you are playing a few clips in chain mode, sometimes you may want to skip some of the files. Now it's very easy to do. You just right click, select play next, see this little icon. It means that these two clips will be skipped and play that one. Another new option is the shuffle mode. When you enable it, when you start playing, it will randomly pick the next clip to play, which is very useful if you have a uh, playlist that you don't want to play all the time in the same order. In Ondia Video 3, it was already possible to add in your playlist video files, audio, still image. It was also already possible to add a live clip in order to play the incoming signal of a video input, for example. We are adding now in Ondia Video 4 the ability to add a stream clip. 
With that, you can add the URL to a RTMP stream and we will play that RTMP stream when it's time. The last type of item that you can now do in Anya Video 4 is to add comments. It's very useful to add these comments if you want to keep your playlist organized. There are new features also in the timing window. If you enable this option, on the video will announce when it remains 10 seconds, 5, 4, 3, and listen. 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2. I'm sure you will love this if you're producing a live show. It is also now possible to view the remaining time until the next live. So if you play that clip, you now know that it's 2 minutes and 20 seconds until that live source plays. The last one before we go to the scheduler, you can now create a folder-based playlist. You point to a folder where there are video files, select Open, and we create automatically the playlist with all the clips that are within that folder. And if now I delete, for example, that clip, you see that it has been deleted automatically from the playlist, and if it gets back, Let's back in. This is very useful if you want to have on the video play the content of a folder automatically. All the users have to do is just drag and drop files within the folder. As promised, let's see now what you can do if you're a TV channel or if you have any need of playing out specific clips at given times. The first thing you can do now is that you can right click on a clip and select set auto start date time. You can then enable the option, select on which date and which time you want the clip to start, and if you close it, this clip will start only on that date at that specific time. Note that for this option to work, you need to have the playlist open. So we have another feature for that. We have the scheduler. So let me open the schedule window. You can see that there are two sections. Here are the repeated events and here are the fixed events. How this works, you simply click plus in order to add either a fixed or a repeating event. If it's a fixed, you specify a date. And if it's a repeating, you say when you want to repeat, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. This will create events. Once you have created your event, you go in the finder, select a few playlists, drag and drop in your event, and that's how you schedule very easily a playlist PL1 to start every day at 8 a.m. There are a few more options, like you can set the playlist to play in loop, or to be automatically randomized when you open it, or to shuffle the playback. Note that you can also play folder-based playlists. Once your schedule is set, just enable it, and it will automatically open the playlist and start playing what it should. If you are doing automated playout, we have also improved our actions, which are sometimes called secondary events and are used to control uh, CG, GPIs, routers, etc., which are sometimes called secondary events. You can, as before, select a place in your clip, click the plus icon in order to add an action at the time, but now you can also set if the action is related to the start of the clip, uh, an in point that you have set, or the out point that you have set, or the end of the clip, which is very useful if you have clips that have different length, but you always want to have an action to be triggered at the end if you want to end a CG project, for example. That's it for the video 4. I hope you are as excited as we are with all the new features that we've added, but there's even more to it because we didn't have the time to cover everything in this video. For example, we have added the support for SCUDI triggers or the ability to control video routers or to play out OP47 subtitling. Uh, all features you can discover on our website in the release notes. Also, what I suggest is that you go and download a free demo version. That's the best thing you can do because you can test download on your Mac and make sure that it fits your needs before you purchase. So that's it for today. Uh, let's see you again soon, I hope, and until then, stay safe.